It's time to start. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our monthly EU Open Screen webinar, and thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. I'm Dr. Kathy Skopelitu, and today we are hosting an exceptional guest, Anton Martinez, who is an assistant professor in the pharmacology department of our Spanish partner site at the University of Santiago de Compostela. Uh, Anton has published 15 papers in the fields of phenotypic screening and functional assays. In this talk, he will describe a sensorial neural-like proliferative model for analgesics high throughput screening, employing the immortalized sensory cell line F11. The developed model was employed for various research purposes, including novel drugs for the symptoms of post-acute effects of COVID-19, on peripheral nervous system, a collaboration between the different EU open screen partner sites. We have the pleasure also to host Dr. Ventula Stilerova, who is working for the Czech open screen as ion channel and G protein capped receptor specialist, and she's getting experiences in different screening assays. I would like to remind you that uh, this webinar is being recorded and also we will be running a live Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions, uh, you just type them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen or you can raise your hand to ask your question directly to our speaker. So Anton, if you are ready, you may share your screen with us. I will give the speech now to you and we are really looking forward to your talk. Thank you so much and good morning. I would like to acknowledge you open a screen for your kind invitation to present this project. It was performed here uh, in Biopharma Research Group in Santiago de Compostela in Spain. We are a team of more than 40 people with the aim to discover new drugs under the direction of Professor Mabel Lothan. Pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with <clears throat> damage or potential damage. It is a complex symptomatology that can be classified in terms of intensity, duration, or etiology. It can be produced by a damage in the central or in the peripheral nervous system in the structures that transmit or process painful signals. This is what is called neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain is associated with disbalances in several structures, such as in brain, where there is a release of inflammatory mediators, changes in glia and in cortical remodeling, and an increase in the descending facilitation pathways and a decrease in the descending inhibitory pathways. Also in the spinal cord, where there is a release of inflammatory mediators, there is glial cell activation, there is an increase in synaptic efficiency and a decrease in inhibitory tone. And also there can be changes in dorsal root ganglia neurons, in sensory neurons, where it's observed an increase in excitability and the nociceptor sensitivity, ectopic firing, and alterations both in gene expression and in signal transmission. We focused our research on peripheral neuropathic pain that is caused by damage in peripheral nerves that transmit painful signals from the limbs to the medulla. There are several targets and channels involved in this process. Some of them are stimulated by substances released from another 
uh, cells, such as inflammatory cells, damaged neurons, or even keratinocytes. Others have an inhibitory effect. There are some drugs for the treatment of neuropathic pain, antidepressants, like tricyclic antidepressants, amitriptyline, for example, uh, duloxetine, anticonvulsants as gabapentin or pregabalin, or topic drugs like the local anesthetic pregabalin or the TRPV1 agonist capsaicin. But all those drugs are rather ineffective and may have important adverse effects. Thus, neuropathic pain is still an unsolved therapeutic need. The importance of neuropathic pains steers up also in the fact that there is a high number of people suffering of it around the world. About 10% of global population is affected. And the associated costs are huge, estimated in more than $600 billion a year. For those reasons, there is a critical need for the development of novel therapies for neuropathic pain. We are now at the crossroads in the field of drug discovery with a need to choose novel in vitro models since FDA does not require uh, animal assays for the approval of some, of some new drugs. It is especially important in the field of neuropathic pain because in vitro modulation uh, and high throughput screening has a very limited translationality. Uh, immortalized cells are quite different of neurons that form peripheral nerves. It, this may be the reason of the limited access of drug discovery programs in neuropathic pain. Also, high throughput screening may be helpful in drug discovery of novel drugs for neuropathic pain, allowing the identification of hit compounds through in vitro models. So translational models for screening large chemical libraries give a chance for the identification of novel therapeutic options in neuropathic pain. Thus, our aim is to develop and to characterize a translational model of dorsal root ganglia neurons for high throughput screening in neuropathic pain. Translational phenotypic screening consists of the selection of drugs only based on quantifiable phenotypic endpoint from cell-based assays without previous knowledge of the target. It usually comprises three stages, assay development, primary and secondary screening, and target deconvolution. There are three different DRG neuron-like models for the development of phenotypic uh, models and of phenotypic screening primary cells, iPS cells, and differentiated cell lines. Primary cells are the closest models to in vivo because they are directly took from the animals. But for their own tension, animals must be sacrifices. And the low quantities obtained limit the assay throughput. iPS are isolated from patients, but they are expensive and the differentiation to achieve cells with a phenotype of interest, it's a complex and a long process. And differentiated cell lines are cells that proliferate, but after a simple differentiation process, they acquire the, th the phenotypic features of interest. In our case, the phenotypic features of dorsal root ganglia of sensory neurons. Their advantages are the closeness of their phenotype to the physiological and pathological situation, the high availability of biological regions for high throughput screening assays compared to primary cells, and the simplicity of their differentiation protocol compared to iPSs. We choose F11 cells for our models as an immortalized dorsal root ganglia neuron. Dorsal F11 cells are hybridomas obtained from mouse neuroblastoma cells and rat dorsal root ganglia neurons that are commercially available. We set up a differentiation protocol after studying the published protocols in the literature. 
we choose force choline and the butyl cyclic AMP as differentiation factors. Both substances increase intracellular cyclic AMP, leading to an activation of CREP transcription factor. It produces the expression of target genes and a stop in cell proliferation. We can see in this time lapse video the 72 hours differentiation process of F11 cells and the acquisition of phenotypic features of dorsal to root ganglia of sensory neurons. We quantify the average length of neurites before and after differentiation, checking that differentiation induced a high increase in neurite length. Oh, sorry. Also, we confirm that differentiation induced an increase in the expression of TRKA receptor as a neuronal marker. We perform a transcriptomic analysis to see the expression of which genes is uh, increased and reduced after differentiation. And we observe that the differentiation process induces the expression of genes related to calcium and sodium signaling as genes encoding 1.8 and 1.5 voltage-dependent sodium channels, and also genes related to neuronal function as those encoding neurogenic or SHC protein. On the other hand, differentiation induced a reduction in the expression of histone encoding genes. Differentiation also induces an increase in the excitability of F11 cells, as seen by the response of those cells before and after differentiation to the depolarizing agent potassium chloride. Thus, we set up a method for differentiating a neuron-like cell line for high throughput screening. Employing F11 cells, we developed a primary screening method in 384 plates employing fluorescent probes to detect the intracellular calcium concentration. In a Hamamatsu FDSS 7000EX, we uh, performed this primary screen. We were looking for drugs that counteracted the increase in excitability induced by lesions affecting peripheral nerves. It has been described that inflammatory mediators induce increases in the excitability of sensory neurons. To mimic this, in our model, we exposed differentiated F11 cells to an inflammatory soup containing prostaglandin E2, serotonin, histamine, and bradykinin, inducing an increase in the response of F11 cells to potassium chloride. We have performed a screening employing Presswick Chemical Library and we identified five hits, nimodipine, felodipine, nitrendipine, nicardipine, and protriptyline that counteracted this increase in cell hyperexcitability. We confirmed that those hits elicited a dose-dependent response with an EC50 around one micromolar. Felodipine, nitrendipine, nimodipine, and nicardipine belong to the chemical group of 1.4 dihydropyridines that are commonly used as, as, as antipertensive medications due to their relaxant effect in vascular muscles. They are calcium channel inhibitors. And these drugs have also been reported to be used as analgesics in neuropathic pain due to their inhibitory effect on L-type calcium channels in neuronal tissues. The fifth identified heat, protriptyline, belongs to the group of the tricyclic antidepressants that have also been employed as analgesics in neuropathic pain. Next, we perform a secondary screening focused on the search of drugs that protect against the deleterious effect on neurons of some uh, anti-tumor drugs that lead to iatrogenic neuropathic pain. The effect of those treatments is complex, inducing several effects on dorsal root ganglia neurons that lead to a reduction in the neuronal terminations that innervate the limbs. They induce iatrogenic neuropathic pain with a globe and a stocking distribution, 
affecting hands and feet. We set up an assay in 96 well plates to look for drugs that counteracted the reduction in neuride length induced by an anti-tumor drug, employing a high content microscopy operetta. We observed that the anti-tumor drug vincristine induced a reduction in neuride length and that this effect was statistically significant. This reduction was counteracted by felodipine and nitrendipine among the hits of the primary screening. So to sum up, in a primary screening, we identified five hits that counteracted the hyperexcitability elicited by inflammatory mediators. And in the secondary screening, we confirmed the effect of two of these hits as protective against the effect of increasing undifferentiated F11 cells. The employment of phenotypic screenings should permit the performance of primary and secondary screenings and also should permit uh, the convolution assays. To validate that the model is adequate for the performance of those assays, we wanted to deconvolute of the antiviral salcitabine on F11 cells differentiated. Salcitabine is a nucleoside analog that acts as a reverse transcriptase inhibitor employed in HIV infections. It induces severe neuropathic pain. The selection of this uh, drug, of this antiviral, was due to the fact that it uh, is reported that produces severe neuropathic pain in patients, but it did not induce apparent damage in F11 cells in terms of neurite uh, length, neurite uh, reduction, or in mortality. We performed a transcriptomic study of the effect of salcitabine on differentiated F11 cells, observing that it increased the expression of NQO1 and ATP23 genes, among others. ATP23 encodes a pump that introduces calcium in the endoplasmic reticulum, concurring with the fact that salcitabine potentiated the increase in intracellular calcium concentration elicited by potassium chloride. And QO1 encodes an enzyme related with the defense against oxidative stress, concurring with the observed increase in reactive oxygen species induced by this drug. We checked that the overexpression of both genes induces the same effect as salcitabine in calcium signaling and in, 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 oxidative, in oxidative stress. So we can conclude that the employment of F11 differentiated cells is a suitable strategy as phenotypic dorsal root ganglia neuron-like models for high throughput screening, that it allows the development of a primary screening for the search of hits that counteract the presentability of F11 cells by inflammatory mediators and a secondary screening for the search of hits that protect against neuronal damage induced by anti-tumor drugs, that this permits the identification of felodipine and nitrendipine as putative hits against neuropathic pain, and that this model enables to go from phenotypic screening to target the convolution. But we are still employing F11 cells for other purposes. We have performed a transcriptomic analysis to study the effect of differentiation and of the inflammatory mediators and of the antiviral on F11 cells studying the variation in the expression of more than 10,000 genes, rat and mouse genes. This information gave rise to other studies. For example, in the framework of a doctoral thesis that is performed here in our group, we are studying the effect of calcium signaling in differentiation. And we have identified that employment of didropiridines impairs the acquisition of neuronal features. We are now going deeper and exploring uh, the role of these calcium channels and calcium transients in F11 cells differentiation. Also, we are employing F11 cells to study new mechanisms of action for the treatment of post-COVID acute sequelae of COVID-19 manifestations in peripheral nervous system, as neuropathy is one of the symptoms of long COVID. And we have identified that interferon gamma and TNF induced changes 
in F11 cell's excitability without apparent changes in, in, the, in the cells in neuride length. And finally, in the frame of a research staff exchange between two EO open screen partner sites with Dr. Stilerova from the Institute of Molecular Science of the Czech Academy of Science, we are employing F11 cells in the study of the modulation of purinergic receptors in F11 cells. Uh, Prosim Bendula. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to this talk. Uh, my name is Vendula Stelerova and I'm working for Czech Open Screen site. It was my great pleasure to use the last minute opportunity in DRIVE program and visit Biopharma Group in Santiago de Compostela. Uh, I plan to learn about operation with Hamamatsu flipper like device and other instruments and exchange the knowledge of work with F11 cells. Uh, the atmosphere was very, very uh, welcoming and friendly, and I obtained much more uh, the challenging opportunity to collaborate on our mutual field, neuropathic play, uh, pain. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, as Dr. Martinez mentioned on the beginning, the neuropathic pain has many different targets. These targets uh, operate in different layers, in different cell types. It's not only neurons, it's uh, microglia, keratinocytes, mast cells, uh, and uh, they act through diverse mechanisms. For example, porinergic P2X receptors are activated by release of ATP from alive or damaged cells. As phenomena, Neuropathic pain is extensively, extensively studied. Aside from some clinical studies, the process is studied mainly in animals. This has many advantages, but one strong disadvantage. We have limited information about translation of this research to human. Uh, during years, the species differences uh, revealed. Uh, there are differences in expression, alike in a pharmacological profile. I choose trip A1 receptor for demonstration, which one is one of the actor in uh, neuropathic pain two. In DRG atlas on the bottom of the slide, uh, we could see that monkey has a huge portion of trip A1 receptor on almost all types of GR. DRG neurons, but uh, Guinea pig almost no one. Mouse expression pattern is close to human, but uh, if you look above, mouse and human pharmacology profiles could be very different. Even smallest change, uh, one or two amino acids could have demanding effect on some compounds. So you see that uh, level mental uh, in a human is acts like activator, but uh, in mouse it's uh, inhibitor of trip A1 channel. On top of that, I would like to note that differences between sexes were already reported in treating of neuropathic pain. But uh, these species differences are not something what we should uh, what should keep us back. It's just something what we need, what we have to keep in mind. Uh, taken to together, there are a few drawbacks uh, of uh, the study of uh, P2X receptor on F11 model system. We could solve them or we could deal with them. There will be definitely a low number of uh, receptors, but we could use uh, a clamp agent to overcome this. Uh, it's known that P2X receptors in neuropathic pain uh, are not overexcited, but they are mostly over uh, upregulated. So this called for different kind of controls uh, to mimic the real environment uh, and not just simply uh, the ITP releases. Uh, moreover, we should carefully evaluate the target presence since it's uh, reported uh, that P2X uh, channels are mostly expressed on mi microglia, not only on neurons. Uh, and the other 
point is uh, the organism differences. Uh, we already have information that uh, the red, uh, what is very often used uh, model for uh, neuropathic pain is uh, different in poor energetic receptors than human. Uh, and the same uh, pharmacology, uh, what is working for it is not working in the human system. But this give us the perfect reason uh, to test the potential hits in different cell lines to prove the results. And uh, uh, on the end, we have to keep in mind the balance of uh, the study to balance male and female system. So we already know from a uh, transcriptomic study what uh, uh, Santiago's uh, lab made uh, that poor energetic receptors are present in the F11 models. There are uh, slightly uh, increased in transcription in uh, differentiation. Uh, it's uh, P2X4 and P2X7, the common suspects in neuropathic pain. Uh, what signals that the models uh, that the model fits well, and we hope to find new compounds to block action of these receptors. The calcium flux is in response to ATP or busy ATP would be used in primary screen, and the complication for translation of model give us opportunity to use ion flux automated patch clamp for secondary screen with human variant of the receptor. Maybe one painkiller for every purpose sounds best, but in fact, we need a range of drugs with different scale and different action. In the best option, we would be able to prevent the neuropathic pain in some courses in future. So thank you for your attention and I'm giving the speaker back to Dr. Martinez for conclusion remarks and looking forward to your questions and comments. I would like to acknowledge everybody who contributed to this, to this research, to this project, to our funding sources and to you all for your assistance and your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anton. Thank you very much, Ventula, for this interesting talk and presentation. Um, for those of you who are joining right now, welcome to our webinar. Uh, this is the time when we will be running the live Q&A session. So if you have any questions, just type them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen or raise your hand to ask your questions directly to our speakers. Uh, so we'll start with the first question. Uh, from Gustavo. Uh, maybe, Anton, uh, you can see this on your Q&A box also, but I will read it anyway. Uh, Gustavo says, DDC is a known potent inhibitor of mitochondrial DNA replication and cause depletion severe mitochondrial DNA. Uh, do you think that the DDC effect in your study could be related to loss of mitochondrial DNA and mitochondrial function? Well, one of the of the next steps that we were going to that we are planning is to study the, the effect on mitochondria. We saw in this transcriptomic uh, assay uh, some evidence point, pointing uh, in that way, but we want to confirm this. And so, your the, the answer to your question is, is is yes, indeed, indeed, it's one of the of the things that that we we have saw. Great, thank you, Anton. Um, yeah, the next one is more general. Maybe also Vendula can answer this. Uh, what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of human models for the development of new therapeutics? Of human models, uh, I guess uh, he means uh, instead of uh, animal models or... Uh, well, uh, it has a lot of advantages to using human models, of course, because it's much uh, easier to translate to uh, potential therapeutics. But uh, the problems are uh, expensive uh, cultures, uh, if we would like to be related to DRG. And uh, moreover, in some cases, it could be very expensive media and supplements. Yes, of course. Um, 
Thank you, Ventula. Uh, another question about the phenotypic screening platforms. Can you tell us a bit more about the phenotypic screening platforms that exist targeting chronic, chronic PAIC drug discovery? Mm, I don't know if uh, it's more directed to me, now this question. Yes, Vendula. it's directed to you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, well, there are some uh, in the literature, the, the findings about this are not concluding. Uh, there are all of them, they have advantages and disadvantages. Um, well, uh, I think that uh, this one has the advantages that, that, that I pointed uh, before. It's true that one of the, the, the disadvantages of, of, of these uh, cells is the, the fact that they are murine and, and rat. The, well, the, they are not uh, all, always close to the to the human to the human uh, well, to humans. But I think that well, they have se several advantages. For example, the, the fact that they are uh, that they proliferate and that, that we can uh, apply them to, to high throughput screening that with other, with other models, uh, this is more, more difficult to, to, to achieve. I don't know if I have. I think that, that answered the, the, the question. Um, another question, uh, what are the challenges using traditional neuro, uh, neuronal assay methods for therapeutic discovery? in contrast with uh, neural screening technology or cellular models? Traditional neuronal assays. You, yes. You, well, I think that the, that the, well, first of all, in traditional uh, screening systems, one of, the, one of the disadvantages is not the use of neuronal, neuronal cells. Um, but the employment of uh, other cell lines that express targets. And this kind of, of models do not allow the, uh, the, the phenotypic screen, for example, well, HECT cells or, uh, he, or CHO cells, uh, they don't allow the, the phenotypic screening. The employment of neurons have, has been described of primary neurons but only just to confirm the the well the the hits or the the compounds uh, identified in, in other in other in other uh, assays. The problem with them is the low availability of of cells and the possibility to 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 prove a very limited uh, number of compounds and also an an, an ethic. Uh, a problem with the with the fact that it needs to to sacrifice uh, animals, basically. Great, thank you, Anton. Uh, yeah, uh, one of our participants asks if you can go back to the slide uh, that describes your inhibitors. ATP. Uh, I uh, know the inhibit. The sorry, the the hits from the. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, one one second, please. Yeah. 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 If you can uh, also explain a bit more about these graphs. Well, they are uh, IC fifty. Uh, or, or, well, no, concentration dose, uh, concentration response graphs, uh, and we identified an an IC fifty around one micromolar. Uh, I don't know. Uh, all of them uh, share that inhibit uh, calcium channels. Four of them are, are dihydropyridines that are employed in, uh, as antihypertensive anti medications. And the other is protriptyline that is an, an, an antidepressant. I don't, know, I don't know which aspect of, of the graphs uh, is needed to be described. I don't know. I think that now is, is more clear. Thank you, Anton. Uh, also a question for Ventula. If you, we go back to your third slide, Ventula, uh, maybe. Sorry, I have to, I have put to put that. Yes, no worries. <laughs> sorry, sorry. 
the third slide of Ben Nula is what's this one, I think. Yes. Yeah, uh, so our participant asks uh, if you can explain more about these uh, disadvantages of, of the study. Oh, uh, okay. Especially for, uh, for, the, for the second and fourth one. Second and fourth, uh, okay. Uh, if, if we compare uh, different targets on F11 cells, uh, that uh, then we know that uh, the cells start to be more and more uh, excitable, let's say over excitable for, uh, for the for the compounds what is coming. Uh, but uh, P2X receptors are not uh, more sensitive. They are uh, really upregulated. Uh, what mean we cannot uh, mimic it uh, just uh, by some, uh, let's say, clamp agent to uh, uh, up upgrade the answer of the receptor, but if we could uh, if we would like to be very uh, precise in the model, we should use control what uh, what will driven the uh, regulation to go up for the receptor to have uh, more receptors in membrane uh, for the neuropathic uh, pain model. And uh, for the uh, fourth point, uh, uh, the F11s are uh, hybridoma from rat and mouse, but uh, we would like to go to human uh, with the medications. So uh, our plan is tested uh, on F11, the, the possible compounds for uh, impact to P2X receptors, but then uh, test it in uh, some human cell line uh, maybe it could be over express P2X system, or we could try to use human DRG neurons to testing. I Thank hope you, I Ventula. answered. Yes, <laughs> this was pretty clear. Okay, I think we have uh, time for one more uh, question. Uh, is there a need to uncover non addictive and safe analgesics? to combat neuropathetic pain? Uh, I think that uh, it's a question for me. I think so. Uh, well, not only well, the problem with neuropathic pain is that we don't have uh, analgesics for it. And um, there is a lot of people that is suffering from neuropathic pain that has uh, that is being medicated with drugs that do not relieve this, this pain and they have important uh, adverse effects. So there is a extreme need of getting new analgesics for, for it. Obviously, there is also a need for the development of non-addictive analgesics for, for other kinds of, of pain. I think that uh, analgesia is one of the, well, it's one of the fields in, in, in drug research that must be a, more potentiated and that uh, there is a lot of work to, to do uh, because obviously uh, the, the, the percentage of people with, with pain uh, is increasing due to the, the fact that the, uh, the, um, the age of, of people is, is increasing. So, so yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, exactly, Anton. And especially because we know a lot of, for example, opioid analgesics, <laughs> but uh, these are highly uh, addictive. So, yeah. Uh, great. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, I would like to thank you both uh, for this talk. Uh, I hope we will have the time in the near future to to address more on this topic because it's, it's a very interesting and challenging topic uh, in this field. Thank you very much, Anton. Thank you very much, Ventula, for this uh, presentation. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank welcoming. You. Thanks. 
Uh, well, at this point, uh, I would like to uh, say a few last words about uh, EU Open Screen. So, uh, I think that um, uh, everybody knows now that uh, uh, you can visit us online uh, uh, through our website, www.eopenscreen.eu, or you can talk to, uh, contact us uh, for any training questions uh, using this email address. And of course, if you would like to know more about our training opportunities, uh, you can sign up for our newsletter. Uh, our next uh, webinar will be uh, in November, in December, sorry, because in November we will have our autumn training school, uh, which uh, is uh, free of charge and you can watch it online. Uh, if you go to our website, you can find more details about our autumn training school. Uh, it will last for three days and we have also uh, many exceptional speakers there for different topics in chemical biology and drug discovery. Thank you very much for watching this webinar and thanks again, our speakers. Uh, and we uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day.